1.9 is one of my favorite trophic levels. Uh, so in this lesson, I want to be able to explain how energy flows and matter cycles through trophic levels. Trophic level is just a fancy word for steps in the food chain. So all ecosystems depend on this continuous inflow of energy in order to maintain their structure and function of transferring matter between the environment and organisms via the biogeochemical cycles, which the, um, the ones you want to know, nitrogen, phosphorus, carbon, and water. So we need this constant inflow of energy because at every step along the way, energy is lost as heat. And when I say lost, it doesn't mean that it's gone forever, but it's not a usable form of energy. Um, it's crappy energy. Because energy can never be created or destroyed. Same thing, matter is never created or destroyed. Matter just gets rearranged. You know, those atoms just get shuffled around. They appear to us as something new, but, you know, they haven't poofed into existence and they didn't go away. They're all still there. Destroy, destroyed, oops, you know what I'm trying to say. It happens. The same thing with energy. Our energy doesn't poof into existence. It doesn't go away. It just becomes, in, it becomes different. That's all. In terrestrial and then marine communities that are close to the surface, energy flows from the sun to the producers and then upward to the higher trophic levels. So we start out with producers, then we have our herbivores, then we have um, even maybe our omnivores, that's our secondary consumers, because they're the ones that eat the, the primary consumers, and then tertiary consumers, and then quaternary consumers. So this shows a terrestrial food chain, and this one shows an aquatic food chain. So that's it! Ah, I love it! Summary, explain how energy flows and matter cycles through the trophic levels. Make sure you are familiar with these different vocab terms, producers, primary consumers, secondary consumers, tertiary, and quaternary, because that's going to come up a lot.